the Arduino command line interface was introduced last August. Um, and since then, we haven't been seeing anyone really using it. S and a few days ago, somebody posted something about how he used it and uh, using um, just something that's close to a notepad. And that made me think, you know, you know what? I wonder how long it's going to take me to create something with a GUI over, let's say, with Python. So I took the mission last night and uh, came up with this. And what you're seeing here is the Blink example, and I'm going to compile and upload it to the Arduino that is on, or Arduino Uno that is on COM3. I'm going to press this one. And, OK, as you can see, I'm done. But you won't see any change in the Blink because it was already there. And you say, hey, I don't know. So let's do this. Let's change the code a little bit, and let's make it a little bit faster. And now let's do this. And you can see it's running much faster. So now let's see how I've done that. So here we go. I do take for granted that you already installed the Arduino CLI. If not, I have another video. I'll try and put a link on the screen. If not, I'm definitely going to put it in the description and follow those instructions to install the Arduino. Since it's been a while since I've actually used it, um, so I'm, I will suggest running the Arduino CLI core upgrade. If, if, if you already installed it and it's been a while since you ran it, it's going to look something like this. I've already ran it earlier, so you, you don't see the really installing process, but this is how it looks when it's done. Okay, so um, if you haven't used uh, Visual Code before, I will recommend, and I rarely recommend any ideas, and I'm going to run this here. That's a really nice thing about it, that you can run it from the command prompt. And here we go. Sorry. Okay, so this is the code. And let's go over it in, in details. A few very important notes on this code. It's very primitive. And it only will work with board that has uh, a single uh, MCU option. And I will show you to you in, uh, later on. And also one that actually recognize as what it is to the system. And I'll explain to you that as well in a second. So let's go over the code. Um, this part of the code is just bring in the the uh, the GUI for for the Python. This is getting the actual path just so make things easier. And I'm using four global variables here. I know Python doesn't like uh, capital letters, but this is the way it comes out of the uh, Arduino CLI. And I was working and it was late night, so forgive me. And the first thing, the first uh, command that I'm using out of the CLI is uh, getting the board list. And let's do this. Let's take this command, sorry. Let's take this command and um, run it inside a command prompt. Sorry. I'm having troubles here. One second. Let's do that again. So I had to pause and resume because something went wrong with the command prompt. Oh, here we go again. So they are doing a CLI board list. And let's run this one. And you can see that's discovering. And right now, it won't discover anything. Um, my only complaint about the uh, CLI, actually, is the way the data is coming back. It has no really uh, form structure. Like, every command will give you a different version of things. I would have loved a JSON or an XML or something like that. I've been using APIs for many years in different fields or any other protocols, even on serial. Um, so yeah, as you can see, they haven't discovered anything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect the Arduino Uno to the system. You could hear the blip, or maybe you haven't. And now let's run this list again. And as you can see, the FQBN, it's what the um, CLI needs to know as to the type of the board. This is the port, which is self-explanatory, and this is the board name, the type of it. And you have the ID, which is something I don't want to dive into right now, but basically defines what the chip is on that specific board. Um, now, what have I done with this? So let's go back to the code. And as you can see here, I've ran that code, 
And if the error code was, was none, meaning I haven't got any error code, and the land result is bigger than two, this is why I told you it's a bit hard to, uh, to, to um, uh, get the data out. And what I've done is I've replaced the, um, uh, this, I've split the data in the tab and then removed all the slash n, encoded it back to UTF-8 and got the first line of result. I only wanted the first line. This is why I told you the code is really primitive. You can use this to populate a drop down or anything. I, what I've done is only got the first board that was connected. So if you have anything in the serial that be the first one and it won't be your Arduino, the code won't work for you. Of course, it's easy to fix it. And I was looking for a really uh, uh, fast, a bit ugly, but fast solution. And it worked well for me. So now I've got these this four uh, uh, pieces of information. There are really two that are important, the FQBN and the port number. And now I'll scroll down to the end of the code because this is where it starts. So I'm getting the connected board info and only if it returns true, meaning I actually found the board, the, the, the code will run. If not, we'll get no board is connected. Now, there's not much of a GUI here. I'm just making a text box. Now the text box get the blink example. If you look at the folder, I'll get the folder here. You can see there is the Blink example and you can see the Blink INO. And here are the compiled files. Let's remove them so you can see they're actually being created. Let's remove them. And you can see there is the Blink INO example. So when I'm loading it, I'll get all the Blink, f I'll get all the info from the get Blink file. Uh, sorry, get Blink file. I'm just reading the Blink INO file and I'm dropping it into the text area. Now, the other thing we have here is a button that is running the command of button press. And if I'll scroll up again, and let's go to, uh, sorry, sorry, button press. The first thing I do is I save the Blink file because I'm running the CLI commands on those, on, on the actual file. I'm not running it from the text that is in the uh, GUI. And then I'm using the first command, which is, to what, which is to compile. Now here, as you can see, I'm using the B, which tells it which is the type of board we are compiling to, and we're using the FQBN, and the Blink uh, the, uh, directory path that we know we're using it in, uh, in the save and, and also in the get. And now I've made a, a small function that runs the CMD and brings back an error code if there is and the result. And then I've made another small function, I'll go over it in a second, that checks if the process was okay, meaning I haven't got any errors. So if it's okay, I'm just now running the second uh, command that we're using, out of the, sorry, there's a third one, and they're using out of the CLI, which is the upload. And again, we got the minus B for the type of the board. And here is the second thing, which is the port. We're adding the port and then the, the blink directory path. Again, we're running the command, getting the error code the result. Now, here's what I told you that I do not like the way the, 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 the CI is giving you answer. And this is one of the things. Um, if the command was successful, you actually will get an empty result. There will be no, nothing coming back here. The, the, the return is, is just empty. And the thing is with this, I actually have to see if there is a LAN result to get it. I would have liked to get something like OK or anything, not just not an empty uh, return. I'm going to look into it. Maybe there's a way to get a better uh, output. I haven't looked into that. I'm going to look into it. So if, if w it was not OK, then we we're just putting the error message at the same time of it. I'm going to uh, show you for example, how it work. If not, we're just saying, okay, compile and upload. The, me the original message was process complete and it haven't changed and it's all good. So now let's run the, the process and see how it actually works. Okay, so let's see how it's actually working. I've uploaded the code and uh, I've caused the, uh, something on purpose. I removed the semicolons from here and um, um, let's run the code. As then you can see, I got an error code that is none, because the error code here will come if the actual PowerShell had a problem running the, the command. And here is the result, which is extra status one compilation fail. And then I told myself, okay, I'll show you the example and I'll run it again. I'll run the same thing here, compiling it from the command prompt. Now the thing is here, as is you can see, there's more info that I was not able, if anyone knows why, if anybody can give me a shout out in the comments of why I was not able to get 
this part of the information only this that will be awesome i think it's probably in the way they're returning it but i'm not 100 percent sure again if you have any idea i would like to hear it in the comment but i was only able to get this part but as you can see what i've done here let's go back to the code for a second and let's let's uh take the uh the function that says is okay sorry again i'm scrolling all over the place sorry is process okay is process okay um, as you can see I've looked into the first um, the first line of the list um, and I've looked for an error code because this is what will show if I go again as you can see the first line here this is will be the first line as you can see there is an error here and this is what I'm looking for and if I do find one if I do not find one, that's a minus one, meaning if I get a final, if I'll try and find this, if you don't find anything, you will get a minus one, and the error code is none, then I return true, and then the error message is empty. And if not, if I do find an error, and, and I'm just, com I'm getting all the lines, and I'm compiling it into one big error message, and this is what is shown to you. Now, let's go back to here. Let me fix this, and then I'll press again. Okay, and the process completed. Now, if I'll remove, now, if I'll remove, I'm disconnecting the UNO from the computer, and then I'll run this, and again, you can see error during upload. And the reason for that is, again, that I have removed the, um, the Arduino. And I'll show you here. Let me grab the code for a second. And I'll do this. And again, it's acting up. So if I'll do here, I'll do the upload here. As you can see, again, I'm getting error here. You can see, and I'm again not able to get the first line. I'm guessing it's somewhere in the way I'm grabbing the data from the uh, Python, as I told you, I'm not an expert in Python. Now I wanna show you two more things as to what I mentioned before, that my code is kinda primitive, so let me connect something else into the serial port. I now got a Wemos connected to my computer and now if I'll try and do list you'll see in a second that even though it knows what a COM port is it has no idea what this board is so if I'll try and run my code with this the code will definitely fail there's another scenario when it fails give me one second I'll connect uh, another board and I'll show you that and now I got a mega connected to the board. And I'm gonna get all the list and now I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna try and upload the code. I mean I have to compile and upload the code to the mega and I'll show you the error I'm getting and I'll explain that to you. So first I'm gonna run the compiling and I'm gonna ch I've changed that to mega. And as you can see, I'm getting build options change, rebuilding all, and then I'm getting missing device or architecture after minus MMCU. And the reason for that is that the Mega, for example, has a two optional MCU. It's got the, the, the 1280 and the 2560, and it's a different compiling for each one of them. So again, my code is not coping with this. Again, super primitive. I made it to, to work on Uno. And um, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, ideas, drop them. I would love to hear from you. And uh, till next time.